In this tutorial, we'll create swim lane to display how e-commerce shopping works and what happens in the back office, how order fulfillment works, and we will do it by creating Microsoft Visio diagram. When customers shop, first step they do is navigate to the start page of the shopping site. So let's look at this on the example of the Amazon. You come to amazon.com and this is what you see on the screen. And you have multiple choices here. You can either search for new products or you can use based on the categories and you can explore the page in details, a lot of different options. I try to generalize and categorize them uh, as, uh, as different categories here in the diagram. Uh, for example, you can search for items you can review recommended items, you can review specials, but you can obviously arrange them differently based on the specific site you're trying to design. Next thing you do is you identify items for purchase. You go to specific category, for example, you find the items you're looking for and you add them to cart. Now let's look at how it's reflected in the process diagram. You have identify items for purchase and you can do it, as I mentioned, through multiple different steps. And then you add these items into the shopping cart. Next step, you go into the cart itself and you see this item and you're ready to do a checkout process. Let's look how it's reflected here. You go to the shopping cart, you can apply promotion or discount, or you can go and get more items. By returning back to shopping, going through the process again, you can use any one of this a listed categories on how you do shopping and then you repeat the process until you're ready when you're ready you go through checkout process order entry is created you have a review order confirmation on the screen page via email uh, potentially on the cell phone as a text message and then it ends your experience until you get the order itself shipped to create bpmn diagram you navigate to the file new and then you have a list of templates presented in visio BPMN is displayed right here, but if you don't see it, what you can do is you can say BPMN, which stands for Business Process Management Notation. Search for it, and it will show you all templates available for BPMN. We will pick BPMN Diagram Template, and you present it here with multiple choices. From my understanding, it's just the different styles, no per se uh, differences. So you can pick any style. The key is to have all the types of shapes that we are planning to use. So I'm going to pick this style just because I like it. There is no other reason. And we'll start brand new diagram. I am going to close this diagram. And um, what you see here is um, this is the template. Microsoft basically shows you the first page. It creates it by default and it creates some help information right on the screen. It shows you the swim lanes as a pool. A pool one and pool two start and end point and it shows you the tasks there's also help how you can do some basic tasks but which are very helpful and we will look at those later in the video how to align uh, how to add text and how to do diagram validations so we'll look at all of those but in the meantime we will delete it and i'm going to select the content and click delete uh, same here i'm going to select the content and click delete first step let's expand the stencils bar and look at all BPMN uh, shapes that we, just so you guys understand what we will be dealing with. We have start and end shapes. Uh, this is end event, this is the starting shape. Uh, but what we're interested in immediately, we're interested in the uh, swim pool and the lane. So this is the one, unfortunately it's not at the start even though you have to bring it uh, first. Uh, it's at the bottom of the list of uh, shapes and we will build it and install it. And uh, our first swim lane is for the customer. So let's rename default name function into the customer. I am going to make it a little bit larger on the screen so we can see better. And um, to do it, you use the zooming lower right corner of the Visio screen. And I'm going to make the swim lane a little bit bigger for the customer. So we'll start with the start event. And to start with the start event, you just drag it onto the swim lane and see once it's selected, you just start typing and uh, we'll call it start. So what is the first thing customer does? Let me ask you this question. When it navigates to the um, e-commerce site. So the first step in the process is really to navigate to the start page of the shopping site. So let's do that. Multiple ways to do it. We can bring the task in same way as I brought the start shape or if you have it hovered, for example, I start uh, stop typing and you see this blue 
uh, triangles uh, right here next to the shape and when I hover them again I didn't click anything but I just hovered it shows me the typically used shapes and one of them is task as well and as you can see now I will click on it and what Visio did it uh, saved me a lot of steps first of all it saved me the step of dragging the task then it saved me the step of connecting uh, start shape and the task shape with the arrow and now it allows me just to start typing what the task is going to be about and the task is about to navigating to the start page of the shopping site customers can do multiple activities they can search items they can review recommended items and they can review some specials so let's reflect this in the diagram i'll show you another way to bring tasks in you just drag and drop the task right and the first thing we do is to uh, pinpoint most of the people just search for specific items right if you come to amazon uh, for example you might uh, start searching and another way to uh, add uh, tasks here you can do copy and paste right which duplicates the item and you see what Microsoft does uh, Microsoft Visio does is it shows us some guidelines so if you want to locate the task item uh, aligned with the first item and aligned on that uh, middle line uh, this green line pinpoints you and allows you to do it so but uh, next step for us is we uh, have a recommended section so the task would be review recommended items right and then the last way to do it, um, it would be similar to what I've done for the first uh, task box so we will just introduce another task box and you see it tried to align it for us but I'm gonna keep dragging and you see here it shows that the distance between search items review recommended items and uh, this box would be the same so and the last items would be review specials so what we have here we have one tasks that uh, one task that leads to three additional tasks so we would need to uh, use a connector and I will connect here because uh, that's one branch I am going to move this arrow for the lower box from the middle connector to the bottom connector and then I'll introduce the third connector here and uh, I will connect it with review recommended items to recap, we've identified three channels how customers can search for items, which are search for items, review recommended items, and review specials on the website. Based on this, what customers do next is they typically just select the items that they need to purchase, which is another task. So let's enter it, and we say identify item. And all of these activities, they lead to this particular action identify item for purchase so we will connect search for items I'm gonna switch to connector and we're going to connect search for items to identify item for purchase and we'll connect review special to identify item for purchase as well so now you see that all three ways of finding the item identification step where customers identify the item for purchase let's go to the next step where a customer will add items to the shopping cart to do that, we'll add another task and we will say add item to the shopping cart. For that customer has an option to apply coupon or another promotional discount. So let's add another task related to this. And this leads us to the decision point where customer would need to decide are there more items that they would like to add or not. To add a decision point, we add it as a standard way of adding items and we'll just ask a question more items and if the answer is yes then customer will go back to this step in the process and i'm going to drag the line so it goes over so there's no intersections of, on the line it just looks more professional and here we will say that uh, it's yes that's really the answer here but if the answer is no we will continue uh, the checkout process to do that we would need to expand our swim lane a little bit to do that you just drag the swim lane to the right 
The next task after adding more items is uh, the checkout process. And the checkout process is not just one specific task because it involves paying, it involves entering shipping address. So it's really a sub process. And this is where I'd like to introduce you to the concept of uh, uh, sub processes. There is a task for that. And sub process is really an activity that has more than one step here. So we will bring it over here uh, and we will connect it manually and we'll give it a title. And the title would be a checkout process. And I started adding in the wrong place. So I am going to use undo feature of Visio. Um, as you see on the quick toolbar, there's an undo button. And what I need to do to type the name of the sub process, I need to go back, select the sub process itself, and I'll type uh, checkout process. What are the other Microsoft Visio topics you would like me to cover in this channel? Could you do me a favor? Could you please post them in the comment section of this video? I'd like to create new tutorials based on your comments. Thank you very much. Now let's continue and have more fun. This is the time when I'd like to introduce you to another swim lane, which we'll call order entry system, which is the database, potentially, uh, that uh, keeps track of all the orders that you have or the ones that customers submit. So I'm gonna minimize um, and make it smaller. So zoom out a little bit and add another swim lane. To do that, I'll just drag the uh, pool lane here and I'll call this swim lane order entry system. And I'll expand it to make it the same size as the uh, top swim lane. And we will introduce the data store here and we will call this data store order entry system. And what we will do here, we will have a swim lane connecting checkout process with the order entry. And as you can see, um, order entry system doesn't have anything in the top. It only has connection points uh, in the middle. So one way is obviously to connect it uh, to this connection point on the sides of the database shape so which works but there's also a way to add uh, custom uh, connector shapes and that's what you use a connection point button for in the tools section uh, of this uh, Visio ribbon bar so this is outside of scope of this video I'm not gonna do it but if you want to research it's uh, rather easy to do so you can do it but we'll move on and add the last step or step before last in the process which would be another task and this task would be review and this is the task that will be done not by the system but it will be done by the customer and that leads us to the end and we'll modify uh, the connector a little bit just to make it look more professional and now I am going to show you a couple tricks so see this line it's not a straight line so a couple ways you can fix it one way is that just to drag it and now it's a straight line. I would like to show you a couple uh, tricks that you can use in Visio. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit again. Uh, right now, all these items are on the same line, um, but uh, we don't know that, and sometimes they may not be on the same. So if you really want to make them on the same line, uh, you select all of these items that typically, uh, that should be on the same line, and then you say align, and then you align all these items uh, in the middle and Visio automatically aligns them. And then another trick would be if you want the same distance between items that just makes them look more professional, you keep them selected and you say position and then distribute uh, horizontally. And once you select it, Visio rearranged all the items. Uh, so the distance between these items in this line is the same. Now, first item without holding anything to select the second item, I hold the shift button, I select second item, and then I select the third item. So now three items are selected. Or another way, as uh, you well aware, you can just drag and drop mouse uh, cursor selection. And uh, what we will do, we will align, and this would be a center type alignment. And we also want to do potentially uh, distribute vertically, so they are in the same distance. Last couple tricks I'd like to show you is um, kind of to change the visual appearance of your diagram. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see everything. And now we can make the swim lane smaller. Now we know that the size 
is not as large this is not as much space as we need so we select everything you can use shortcut control a to select everything on the diagram and there are different shape styles so if you don't like this color that i selected initially you can change different uh, style or color and that's right on the home tab now you can also go into the design tab and there are a lot more options here so you can select different themes for example maybe you want to select this theme it doesn't look very good you can always undo right this is an undo button and you can even undo this um, but uh, you can play with the themes and find out the one that you like and theme comes with the set of fonts and color so that's uh, really good or you can just if you're happy with the theme then you can look at some different variants of the theme right so whatever you'd like to do you can play with the variations right here in this part of the screen and you can also pick the background color also like uh, this worldwide domination um, <laughs> or just worldwide um, image of the world so if you want that obviously this uh, by using undo button and the last thing i wanted to show you is the tab cross-functional flowchart because we've selected bpmn shapes it comes with this cross-functional flowchart so you can do a couple things here um, sometimes it might be good to select and put a title of the diagram right into the swim lanes you need to select the uh, flow chart first then. now let's look at the styles here there are different styles that you can select and one style will show us that um, we'll have a title on the top so we selected everything i clicked select title on the top but nothing shows up why is that because i did not select the show title bar so now I selected show title bar and you see it doesn't look good because it added title to both swim lanes. So let's undo this. And what you need to do to add a title just top swim lane, we obviously only need to select the top swim lane and then say show the title. And that adds title only to the top swim lane. You can move it a little bit, use one page. Otherwise, if you try to print it, it will print on four pages, which is something maybe what you want. But uh, typically I try to save paper when I print. What are the other e-commerce topics you would like me to cover? Can you please post them in the comment section of this video? I'd like to cover them in my future tutorials. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now let's continue and have more fun. Now let's supplement this diagram with what's happening in the back office. To do that, let's add additional swim lane. And to, do, to document all this information, we'll be using BPMN business process management notation shapes basic shapes i have them here on the left and first thing we're going to do we're going to add another swim lane we'll drag it from the box where all the shapes are represented into a separate swim lane and because it's an independent process we're not going to connect those swim lanes because uh, there is no sequence in placing somebody placing the order and somebody fulfilling the order and this is really what it's called order fulfillment this is how back office operations are categorized but we'll call them for simplicity back office in parents this is i'll mention order fulfillment so that's the first step we've added swim lane next step let's add a starting point for this order and this is the start event so we'll drag the start shape uh, onto the picture and next step is we will add a task to add a task i need to click on the start uh, shape and then it offers me a lot of different choices i'll choose a task and here in the task we'll say review order right because that's the first step that's happening somebody who received the order uh, on the back office and trying to fulfill the order they need to understand what's happening let's add this uh, start text here into the start shape uh, I selected it again and I just started typing and it's added a text start that's a starting point and that's the part of the notation next step we need to check if order is valid to do that let's select this task so after review we have a decision we need to check is order valid so let's add this question into the decision box and I'll put question mark and the answer here would be yes or no and based on this answers there would be different path so for example if answer is yes we'll add another task and we'll call it accept order right and here we'll say that this is yes but if path is no we probably make sense to put it uh, at the bottom of the decision shape so i'm going to extend our swim lane a little bit and you see the way i do it is i just hover over the borderline of the swim lane and i drag it uh, to the bottom so now let's extend this uh, and I will have a task 
for no if order is not valid and the question here it's actually not a task so i made a mistake here in order for me to fix this mistake i can just do undo that's one way to do it or i can simply hit delete button to delete this shape and the connector so this would be another decision point for me and the decision is uh, another question where i will be asking can order issues be resolved it looks like I made a typo here so I'm going to use the spell checker to fix the question and because it's a decision the path might be yes or no for this can order be resolved question so let's first do the path no and path no would be easy we'll have another task we'll say we will reject the order and we will have an endpoint so that pretty much ends our process. We can start here. If order is not valid, we have issues. We can't resolve them. We reject the order. And here we'll have to say yes. And here we'll have to say no. And looks like I made a mistake here because the question here, can order issues be resolved? If answer is yes, we should continue to accepting the order. This path is really no. So if order issues cannot be resolved, then we are rejecting the order. So you got to be careful. I caught my mistake myself, but that's where the review process with your colleagues or customers, whoever would be on the receiving end of this diagram is, is very important to help you catch uh, all those types of issues. Now let's add another connector here. Uh, and to do that, I clicked on the connector button on the ribbon in Visio, and I drag the connector and this would be a yes path. Uh, so if order issues can be resolved by back office, maybe by contacting the customer or maybe by typical order issue might be item is not available. So it was available on the side, but never was removed. But in reality, in the warehouse, it's not available. So maybe it can be resolved by bringing the items into the uh, warehouse so where it can be fulfilled. So if it can be resolved, yes, we're accepting the order and we're moving on. Our next step after order is accepted is that we need to package the order. To do that, let's add another task and we'll call it package the order. After order is packaged, next step is we need to ship it. So we'll add a task, ship the order. And after shipping, we need to generate shipment confirmation. So let's add this task here. And we have shipment confirmation. Typically it's a label on your uh, shipment package. And then the last step would be notify the customer. This could be done via email, phone, uh, a lot of different ways to do it. We can also add um, a line here back to the customer. I'm not going to do it just so I'm not complicating this diagram, uh, but you can do it. Just send maybe the message or there are multiple different ways how you can show it. In fact, there is a message shape here uh, in the BPMN diagram types. Instead, I'm just going to end this process and I'm do all this, this two tasks that I promised you I will do. So this is the end shape. I'm going to type end and then we will uh, complete. I'll show you the reason why we need additional connection point and how we can play with the funds. So those are two tips and tricks I promised you in the beginning. So if we look at this shape order entry system, you see that order entry system only supports lines connecting from the sides. What I'd like to do, I'd like to add a connection point so my line from checkout process into the order entry process will go from the bottom of the checkout process into the top of the order entry system so let me make it a little bit bigger you can do it by clicking specific percentage or you can just zoom into that selected area and Visio will automatically try to understand which objects you're trying to get closer to so I'm gonna make even closer first step I'd like to do is make this shape aligned with the top shape and also, I'd like it to be a line you see on the, here, on this bar, there, there are some lines that connect as, as I move it, it moves with me. So I want it to be on the edges of this line, and I'll explain you why in a second. But you want to position your shape so it is in between those lines, and it's connected exactly to the lines on, the, on this measuring tape that runs here on the Visio screen. In fact, I switched into the view, and it's called ruler. So, which makes total sense. So on the ruler, I'll use the right terminology, on the ruler, you would have to make sure, and I'm showing, demonstrating this again, that it's your shape is aligned to the edges. And I'll explain you why in a second. Next step, we'll go back to the home tab. We'll add a connector. 
and here let's get even closer because this would be very helpful you see as I move uh, I need to have this order entry shape selected and I have a connector shape selected as well now I need to hold the control button and as soon as I hold the control button you see what happens with the cursor this is I push control button and then I release control button control button actually adds additional shape connector for me and the reason I wanted to have a ruler and you see as soon as I hit control button on the ruler the cursor shows up so now I know that 11 is in the middle of my shape and now I just want to find the right place on my shape borderline so I can add this connection point when I'm ready I am clicking at the left mouse uh, button on my mouse and see it added this red connection point now I should be able to switch back to pointer tool get my line and connect my line to this new connection point before I wasn't able to do that so now it's I know it's in the middle of the shape because I aligned my shape so this is an exact center and uh, I zoomed in so I can see exactly where I'm adding it and if I zoom out you see it looks much more professional let me show you another problem that we will try to fix here so we will go back to the order fulfillment diagram and here in order fulfillment this text is fine it doesn't exceed the sizes of the shape uh, but let me just temporarily so I can show you the point uh, make it exceed uh, the size of this particular shape so let me clarify the question and say can order issues be resolved internally and see what happens and you see Visio was smart enough it readjusted the size of the shape but now it doesn't look exactly as this shape what if I make it this size again you see it kind of exceeds the size of the shape but there's a tool here on the toolbar called uh, text block which allows you to play with the size of the shape so let me zoom in a little bit closer to this shape so we will see exactly what's happening and I will click on this tool text block and what you can do here now you can change how text is located and aligned and you can align it much better and it's especially helpful for this box because it's such an odd shape for me the fix would be remove the word internal and go back to the original size and that's exactly what I'm going to do but my point is that if you ever have a need of adjust the text inside the shape box just remember that there is a box here called text block you can trigger it by clicking here in the tools group on the ribbon or there's a shortcut shift control 4 that you can use if you like the content, please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends. Also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.